I'm so sorry, the February uh, Wallingford Board of Education meeting. And um, with that, could we rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can I come on. I'm sorry. I, I don't think I was on. Mrs. Lavelle, can I get a roll call, please? Yes. Mrs. Costelli? Here. Mrs. Corso? Here. Ms. Levesque? Here. Mrs. McKay? Here. Mrs. Purcell? Here. Mr. Reynolds? Mrs. Roccio? Here. Mr. Ross? Here. Mr. Votto? Here. Eight members present and voting. Thank you. Uh, stu I, I feel like a fish out of water. This isn't our normal place, and I, it's, uh, it's unsettling. Okay, we are creatures of habit. Uh, pre uh, student board reps, we'll start with Lyman Hall. Um, Audrey Larson, come on up. Hey, how are you, Audrey? Good, how are you? Good. Uh, there's been a lot of exciting things happening at Do Lyman. Do share. <laughs> The Culinary Arts and Hospitality Program is launching a new program called Pure Fresh, which is a food program that will give components of an easy and healthy meal for people to take home. The Culinary Program has also launched their new website. The debate team has begun meeting, starting with their spring program. Boys basketball had their senior night yesterday. Boys hockey won against JBWA uh, with a score of 7-5. to five. The boys swim team won against Foreign Law, 100-83. to 83. Our girls basketball team made the SCC tournament and they won their game 50 to 30 on their senior night. Girls basketball team has had their pink night on January 31st, which helps to raise money for the Sisters Project. The hockey team won the SCC D3 regular season title. They will be competing in the SCC tournament uh, starting next Wednesday night. The cheer team will be competing at their Mercy competition Saturday morning at 10 a.m. and the state competition will be on March 3rd. Every Monday, uh, we've been running our Mindful Mondays program in which students learn mindfulness and breathing techniques to reduce stress. Boys Indoor Track finished sixth in the state. Uh, our student support section for games, Wah Bob, has been coming out to our hockey games and cheering our players on. Our Best Buddies chapter had their successful fundraiser at Chipotle on January 5th. Best Buddies Awareness Month is coming up in March and our chapter will have a weekly event in Spirit Day. Uh, rumors, our school play was a hit on February 7th and 8th. Our sophomores will be doing Credit for Life on February 26th, and they can explore their future careers and how to budget. Our unified sports team will be having their Penguin Plunge, in which participants run into the Crystal Lake in the cold to raise money for the unified basketball team on March 2nd. And I have flyers for the board. Uh, we would love it if you can come. Uh -huh. So uh, I, I don't have to plunge. No, I just have no. to come. OK, I, I want to be clear about that. OK. <laughs> Uh, the Unified Sports Team is also having a sneaker drive where they can earn money for their team. And their game was on January 5th, and there was a lot of fun. Our Vivace came out to sing the National Anthem. The National Honor Society will have their induction ceremony on March 28th. May 21st, 22nd, and 23rd, we will have our Ag Science Fair, which you are also welcome to come to. The band is currently getting ready for their Disney trip in April and beginning to work on the music for the parade. And student council is currently working on updating their bylaws. And I have flyers about the penguin plunge for you. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> Thanks, Audrey. Great job, as always. OK, from Mark T. Sheehan, Marissa, come on <laughs> up. I'm sure there's a ton going on at Sheehan, too. Yeah. OK. Um, this past, past month has been very busy in sports for Sheehan. All of our winter seasons have concluded or are concluding this week. Every winter team qualified for postseason play, which is a major accomplishment. We also have had successful senior nights for every sport, with the last one being tonight in boys swimming with their meet against Lyman Hall. On February 11th, Sheehan held the basketball doubleheader against Lyman Hall, where we won both games. The cheerleaders sh showed unity at halftime by performing together. In girls basketball, senior captain Olivia Robles scored her 1,000th point in a recent game. She is the 10th player in Sheehan basketball history to achieve this accomplishment. She currently has over 1,200 points. Both the boys and girls basketball teams will be competing in the state tournaments over the next few weeks, and we are looking forward to supporting them. On Saturday, our hockey team beat Lyman Hall 5-1 with two goals from Joe Raccio, two goals from Luke Festa, and one goal from Anthony Romano. She and Cheerling competed at the SEC Championships, and their next competition is next weekend at the CIAC Cheerleading Competition. The indoor track team sent many members to state opens this past weekend and concluded their season by resulting in breaking many school records. 
The Connecticut All-State Banquets were held where Sheehan had four football players be recognized, Terrence Bogan, Weston Terzi, Luke Olette, and Jake Smith. Sheehan also had one soccer player, Olivia Dubuck, be recognized. Former Sheehan girls soccer coach, Coach Murphy, was presented into the Connecticut High School Coaches Association. Looking ahead, spring sports are set to start on March 16th. On February 4th, juniors concluded picking their classes. February 4th through February 8th, Sheehan held a Counselor Appreciation Week. On February 8th, the drama students held Titans on Broadway, where many of the individuals sang as a fundraiser for their upcoming show. On February 11th, the sophomore class started their course selection for junior year. On February 26th, our sophomores will be going to the Credit for Life field trip, where they will get to see expenses and manage management skills. For the first time ever, we combined advisories to help build collaboration, build mentors, and to bring the different grades together. Seniors are paired with sophomores, and juniors are paired with freshmen. We will have our spring dance on April 6th, and on March 6th, we will have a military fair during lunch where students can learn about the different branches of military. Our spring musical, Cinderella, is going to be performed March 7th through the 9th. On March 8th, we will hold our spring blood drive. On March 26th, the Sheehan Hall of Fame introduction will happen. Thank you. Thank you. As always, a lot going on. Great job. Okay, presentation and awards. Dr. Menzo. Tonight, what we wanted to do was invite two of our students who were slated to speak at the Martin Luther uh, King Jr. ceremony, but unfortunately, that was canceled due to inclement weather. Um, and unfortunately, due to scheduling in the town, they were unable to reschedule. Um, but we felt it was important to have our students uh, share because um, we, we know how important that day is to our community, our nation, mm -hmm. and also we know how hard they work in preparation for this. So we'd love to have had the Sheehan Chorus here, but mm -hmm. we know that they're in all different places and they're also rehearsing for Cinderella, which will be coming up in a few weeks. Um, so at this time, though, I'd like to call up um, first uh, Natalie Di Domenico um, to have her come up and share her uh, essay uh, and reading. Welcome, Natalie. Thank you, and thank you for having us, by the way. Martin Luther King Jr.'s words were specifically relevant in the context of the civil rights movement of the 50s and 60s, but they will always maintain relevance in our society today. Dr. King once said, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. This holds true under any circumstance in regards to oppression of all kinds. Until people, people like Dr. King and people like you and me, stand up for what they believe in, nothing will change. If Dr. King was not vocal about the things that truly mattered, nothing would have changed. Dr. King, er, when fear overtakes strength and dedication to valuable causes, the oppressed are lulled into a belief that injustice cannot and will not end. But that is what makes Dr. King so special. He believed that everyone deserves just treatment, identified in the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. We hold, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. All men are created equal, regardless of their color, ethnicity, sexuality, and appearance. And that's where Dr. King's message is still as relevant as ever. Because in the same way that Dr. King had a dream that blacks and whites could live in harmony, I have a dream that all men and women are created equal. Across the world, injustice still exists, both in terms of race and gender. And if there's one thing that we can learn from Dr. King, it's that silence truly does end worlds, because silence favors the oppressor. As Dr. King said, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about the things that matter. And if we forget that and allow any oppression to continue existing without counteraction, then nothing will change. Sometimes it takes a little bit of courage to solve what truly matters, not silence to encourage it. Thank you. And now I'll invite up um, Jason Myers, her, uh, who's uh, also from Mark T. Sheen High School, who's going to present his essay. The world in which Americans currently live is a world unlike any other that has existed in the American landscape thus far. It is a post-slavery, post-segregation world that is indebted to the valiant and pa passionate campaigning efforts of people like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. that created change. No longer is it a certainty that the country is fundamentally broken in its principles and laws. By law, all people of differing races, no matter what their nationality or skin color, are accepted and included under the same rights and privileges once reserved for white men. 
Immense quantities of change have graced this land since the peak of the civil rights battle in the 1960s. However, beyond the surface level equality of the United States, there still lies a question. Has the United States and its people eliminated racism and injustice on an unorganized and social level? King said that genuine freedom cannot be celebrated until we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city. It is debatable whether the bell of freedom has been cast and rung in all possible and necessary locations. It is easy to visualize peace when it is suspended in the light of the world. The darkness is where injustice still lurks and plots its coup against the freedoms of the nation. In the vast cities of New York and Chicago, among other places, for every bright, shining city street bursting with life, there is a rundown ghetto or back street where both families and individuals are battered down to their knees by the blows of history and the inescapable chains of poverty. There is still work to be done in order for this country to endure as a symbol of opportunity and equality. The United States cannot depend entirely on its victories of the distant past in order to sustain its integrity in the present. King said that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice anywhere. Not until racism, an inherited disadvantage based, based on race, is entirely eradicated can this nation rest its head and sleep under the sky of an equal and opportunity-rich landscape? Thank you. So I think you could understand why, after hearing both of those, why I felt it was important mm -hmm. that the rest of the community hear something that was meant to be heard. Uh, last month, but unfortunately because of the weather was unable to be uh, heard at that time. So I want to thank both the students and their families uh, for their support. I want to thank Mr. Zacco for coming also as principal to support them this evening. Um, this is, again, a ceremony that I've come to love and appreciate for the 10 years that I've been here, and I wanted to at least bring a piece of it to the community as well as our board. So thank you for allowing us to do that tonight by being here. Mm -hmm. uh, it was really truly meaningful. But I don't know if there are other board members who have comments or um, anything mm -hmm. they'd like to say. Mrs. Purcell. I just wanna say as past students, I'm so proud of you. And that um, you just really inspire all of us. I mean, to have our youth be like this and to really understand what's going on in the world gives us a lot of hope. Thanks. I want to also echo Dr. Manzo's uh, sentiments. Um, I usually attend that event, and it was a real disappointment for me when I when it got canceled. And so I, I do want to say thank you for taking the time and sharing your poignant thoughts this evening with us. And we really, really appreciate it. And I'm glad Dr. Menzo thought to include you in our meeting tonight and share you know, your, your message because as Mrs. Purcell said and as Dr. Menzo said, it's, you articulated it beautifully and it's inspiring for all of us. So thank you so much for taking the time. Really, really appreciate it. Great job. Okay, any, we're good? Okay, welcome Mr. Reynolds. I know you had a prior engagement so we're glad you made it. Um, any questions from the audience? Any questions? As I always say, I know our meetings are riveting, but if there is an opportunity that you might want to leave, this would be an awesome time to consider <coughs> exiting, but otherwise we welcome you to stay. Um, beyond that, uh, can I get a motion to go into executive session? for items E1, discussion of acceptance of retirement, E2, discussion of acceptance of resignation, E3, discussion of acceptance of leave of absence, and E4, discussion of approval of high school coach. So, so moved. moved. Okay, I, good luck with that. <laughs> I have a first and second, that's all that matters. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, abstention, motion carries and we're in executive session. Okay, we are back. Can I get a motion to come out of executive session? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Have a first and second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, abstention, motion carries. We're out of executive session. Uh, consent agenda, can I get a motion to accept our consent agenda items 7.1 through 7.13? So moved. Second. second. Have a first and second. Any discussion? 
All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, abstention, motion carries. And as a result, item eight, we have no items removed from the consent agenda. Correspondence, <coughs> Mr. Reynolds. Yes, we'd like to thank uh, Rosemary Hall Foundation, Inc. for the donation of a variety of computer equipment valued at $37,300 made to the Walker School District. And we also received a thank you note from Thelma and Carol Brown. Great, thank you. Um, committee reports, item 10, starting with ACES. Yes. Thank you, Madam yeah, uh, Chair. I'm sorry, Mrs. Slovak. The ACES Governing Board met on February 14, 2019. The minutes of the January 2019 meeting were approved. Under the Executive Director's Report, the status of a proposed lease with Gateway Community College for the North Haven campus property to house the Wintergreen Magnet School continues to be discussed. ACES administration met with the state to discuss this option and a timeline for the signing of an agreement, which, if approved, is slated for late March. The Leader Hill Building project is progressing with the building reported to be enclosed now. The Governing Board approved the filing of the fiscal reports subject to audit, the Early Head Start monthly reports, and the Human Resources report. Carol Bunk, Director of Human Resources, also indicated that ACES will offer afternoon sessions for mandated training, such as OSHA, abuse and neglect, suicide prevention, et cetera. Under new business, the Governing Board approved a tentative agreement with the Administrators Association. The tentative contract consists of a 1.5% increase with STEP in the first year, followed by a 1.25% increase with STEP in the second year and the third year of the contract. The Governing Board also approved the ACES internal school calendars for the 2019-2020 school year. Under old business, the Governing Board approved policy 5144.1, Restraints and Seclusions. The Board reviewed for a first read policy 5950-4950, Parent Choice Lottery Preferences. It was noted that Hamden students may not exceed 55% of the population at WIMS. It was also noted that Meriden students may not exceed 75% of the population at Thames. There continues to be board discussion regarding the proposed provision of preference in the Magnet School Lottery application process for siblings, children, or grandchildren of ACES employees. Mr. William Rice, the Assistant Executive Director, updated the Board on curriculum and instruction issues. He indicated that schedules are being prepared for SBAC administration. Students are working on science fair projects. Two students have made significant progress and are being transitioned back to their home district in Bridgeport. Mill Road students are celebrating being kind to others. <coughs> WIMS continues to work with Crayola as part of their Arts Integration Initiative and WIMS is in discussions with Southern Connecticut State University regarding a collaboration to house their reading center. A 550 silver level staff in-service for verbal de-escalation training is being offered. The next ACES Governing Board meeting is scheduled for March 14, 2019. There are 69 Wallingford students attending ACES programs. Perfect. Thank you, Mrs. Levac. Any questions? Okay. Um, Mr. Bauder, before I move on on the agenda, did you yeah, want to make a comment? Yeah, I just wanted to uh, mention something. Uh, Mr. Reynolds mentioned the gift from uh, Choate okay. School. And I just wanted okay. to reiterate that a little bit. Yeah. No offense to you. I, I just no. felt, I want to make sure the public heard that. It was a $37,000 yeah. donation okay. to our school system, with including uh, iPads and uh, MacBook, yeah. uh, MacBooks and uh, uh, iMacs. Uh, this is a great great amount of uh, expensive stuff that they donate and I think it just shows another or demonstrates another uh, time when Choate is trying to show that they are a good neighbor uh, and they they contribute to our community every day I just wanted to make that clear thank you yeah all good um, moving along on our committee reports uh, Winter Green Magnets uh, School Steering Committee Mrs. Latour I was not able to attend that meeting due to its rescheduling, so the next no meeting is, is next week. Perfect. Up. Thank you. Um, next, School to Career Representative Business Think Tank. I always jump between Mrs. Well, Castelli and we Dr. Didn't Menza. Have an, we didn't have an official didn't. meeting. Okay. Um, however, I do want to bring, a, it, it kind of goes along the same vein. We did have a meeting last Friday uh, with medical professionals in the community. So we had Hartford Hospital. We had Masonic. 
Uh, we had people from Workforce, we had people from Quinnipiac, yep. um, and Community Healthcare Group. Uh, because we're talking about our pipeline program that we're going to be working on for our students who get their CNE pinning uh, this spring to go and be part of a three semester program where they would do a paid apprenticeship in the fall at one of these local agencies. So um, we wanted an initial meeting just to see kind of see if we're on the same right page. Are we doing the right thing? Resounding yes. Mm -hmm. um, Hartford Hospital gave us some great ideas mm -hmm. um, about potential um, partners. new partnerships mm -hmm. and looking at students who are really geared towards technology um, that might not want to be with a patient but wants to work in a lab and do high level analysis using data and technology they said they can't find people to fill those positions mm -hmm. at all um, so Mary Ellen Pettit one of our two uh, medical careers CNA teachers was there from Sheehan and she spoke about how we're looking at um, pharmacy tech and there was just a, tr a tremendous amount of exchange of knowledge and information. So we're actually scheduling a follow-up meeting and it's going to be at Sheehan High School in the medical careers section to show them what we have, what we do there, and then the idea is to have them sign up. We're gonna have the Department of Labor there so they could sign up to become a pre-apprenticeship program. So then be we become an official program that then we can offer to our graduating students from the pinning program. So our CNA students that are juniors going into senior year, they would have a summer semester where they would do a job shadowing, fall semester apprenticeship where they would get paid, and then a spring semester where they would be able to work on their resumes either for post high school experience in college or um, a technical school based on that experience, or actually get a, a job part-time, full-time in one of these facilities. So um, I appreciate Roxanne was there uh, to, to support the initiative. You know, it was amazing um, as a just kind of a observing and being there and supporting um, in theory. But um, there aren't a lot of high schools that are providing these opportunities. We're really unique that way. And that is, and, and I know, um, Mrs. Corso, you support my way of thinking, and other board members too, but I know we talk about this, is the idea of tangible skills, that we're providing tangible skills to our students that when they're graduating from high school, and what, one thing that I learned that day, which I never realized, is even if there are um, young folks that are continuing on, let's say, to become a pharmacist or other medical careers, they need to put in CNA hours. They have to show evidence that they've worked at that level, patient level. So for many of these students, that, that, that's a box they can check because they did it, they put in the hours at the high school level. Very unusual. So, you know, it's, it made me proud. Um, knowing that we're offering this kind of programming that provides tangible skills and then we're going one step further beyond the CNA, again, advanced programming that our students are graduating with um, credentials, literally credentials. And I, I always refer back, Dr. Menzo made this a bunch of years back, and I remember this when we started with really Wallingford 100, the idea of what what value does our diploma provide? Is it inherently, if you graduate from Yale or Harvard, there's an inherent value. We, we and you, that's been your mantra, and your team's mantra is when you graduate from a Wallingford school system, you, you, our diploma has value, and a, a tangible value if our students take advantage of the opportunities that are afforded to them. So it was, a, it was a really aha moment for me, and it was a proud moment for me um, as Wallingford Board of Ed to be there and just to listen to how the heads were nodding, you know, in the audience from these folks that they're thrilled to partner with us. So it was, it was a really good meeting, so. And connected to this, Ms. Racho, before the meeting gave me, um, there's a, uh, a legislative proposal regarding the changing, excuse me? I, I don't understand it, that's why I gave um, well, the, <laughs> it. Well, it basically what happens is there's a shortage area of these teachers. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it, they're not going with a DSAP, meaning a durational shortage, you know, provisional, but they're looking at can teachers who teach in some of the technical schools, which don't necessarily have the full um, certification, not, they have certification, but not necessarily does it transition always into comprehensive high schools. So they're looking to make it more flexible uh, because that's one of the concerns because they are beginning to listen to some of the shortage areas mm -hmm. in our 
in our state and, and one of the two major areas besides advanced manufacturing, which that's the other part of our pipeline, right. the other part is the medical careers. So they're trying to broaden because we actually, after the meeting, it was ironic, Mary Ellen Pettit, the teacher who was there, she said, there, she's always getting calls from other districts to have, you know, to poach her, to steal her and right. go to their district because there aren't enough certified teachers in this area. So they're trying to make it more accessible. Um, that's at least the understanding that I got from the people I've spoken to. Mm -hmm. um, but that, and that's going to be a continued opportunity for us to, you know, to be aware of that we need to make sure that, and I think we do a nice job. We keep our program size appropriate. We don't try to over size our program. Uh, we try to give them as many resources as possible. I think they enjoy the relationships that we have with real professionals mm -hmm. at Masonic and Gaylord and Midstate. I mean, we have highly qualified people that they're working with. Um, and then to be able to expand the program, there was a great, the, the woman from Quinnipiac was fantastic because she said, you know, we have this all this new research center and she's like, you, we should have your students being, you know, coming over as seniors, your, your, your science students doing research in our labs. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was, was a, it was a 45 minute to 55 it, it, minute that's meeting. That's the beauty of it. It wasn't, it wasn't it a, was, a super long, a it was a real down and dirty meeting, but it accomplished yeah. a ton of things in a positive way. So and it I, was, and I do have to thank yeah. uh, Joe Mara, who yep. is part of the Hubcap mm -hmm. uh, Wallingford board, board, as well as EDC. Um, he really helped us facilitate getting That's the people true. in the room. So I want to really thank him for that. And then Rob Covey, with his, Rob Rob Covey got there. right on That's it. That's true. I don't think I was in my car, and there were emails already to all these people yeah. thanking them for coming. Rob gave his and business <laughs> card to every single person there. Yeah. It, was, it was fantastic. And he, has a conference it was fantastic. Call. He, he networked beautifully. He has a conference call with the executive director of CVS for programming. <clears throat> That's next week. He already has a call set up for them. So um, very, it was a good moment. Yeah. And again, really these, are, these are these are. No matter if the students go into workforce right after high school or four or six <coughs> years later, depending on their trajectory in terms of college, um, they'll have a, a, a deeper understanding and a deeper appreciation for, of the career that they intend to go into, which is <coughs> always important. Yeah. So. Thank you for that. Um, okay, so I lost my point. Okay, PTAC. PTAC it was update. supposed to be tonight, so we don't have a meeting, so it okay. won't be too much. That's fine. Um, item 10.5, Plan of Conservation Development. Mr. Nothing, Reynolds? Nothing new. Yeah, well, that's a surprise. <laughs> um, okay, 10.6, Food Service Strategic Plan. Mr. Mencher? Um, we did not meet in January. We are scheduled to meet next week. And some of the things we're working on is we continue to work and plan the elementary junior chefs uh, competition. And we're looking uh, into the survey that we talked about last week. And also we are moving forward with piloting the two elementary breakfast programs in May. Perfect. Thank you. And then I'm going to combine 10.7 and 10.8 for Mr. Deptula, stage lighting renovation and our four school window replacement. We have nothing new okay. to report this month. Okay, it's all good. Um, item 11, old business. I do not believe we have any. Um, item 12, instructional committee. Uh, Mrs. Corso, you are up. Thank you. Yep. I'm going to go right into these motions. Sure, um, please do. So I make a motion that the Board of Ed accept with regret the retirement of James Franchese, effective June 30th, 2019. Mr. Franchese has been a high school assistant principal from April 1999, then a curriculum coordinator for humanities from August 2014 for a total of 20.5 20 years of service in the Wallingford Public Schools. I second that motion. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention, motion carries. Next motion, uh, I make a motion that the Board of Ed accept with regret the resignation of Michael Lavoy, ex effective March 6, 2019. Mr. Lo Lavoy has been a science teacher since November 9, 2011. I have a second? Second it. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. Next one. I make a motion that a leave of absence for Barbara Mintonello be approved without pay and in accordance with the provision of the current teacher's contract for one week in March 2019. Second the motion. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed? Nay. 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 Abstention? Motion is denied. 
And lastly, I make a motion that the Board of Ed accept the appointment of the following candidate to a coaching position, uh, the girls field hockey coach at <coughs> Sheehan, Katie Lynn Gill. Please second the motion. Thank you, any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Abstention? That motion carries. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Um, a presentation of our revised policy with the use of tobacco and substitute devices. So this is the second read for this policy. Um, it is presented as it was at the instructional committee. Any, any questions or comments? Okay. So well, just, just to be clear, um, I want to make sure that more for TV land, I'm sorry to interrupt Mrs. Latour, but th we do three reads. This is our second read for all of these, so no motions are needed, but just simply it's an opportunity if board members have any concerns, questions, it's an one of three opportunities to articulate them. We'll have one more read and then it'll go into um, our policies as it updates. Sorry to interrupt again. No, no worries. Thank you. 12.6 is the presentation of proposed revised policy 4212.42, drug and alcohol testing and training for drivers of school buses and student transportation vehicles. We did add the word training to the title of this policy per our conversation um, last week. And then I also did speak with Kathy Nilan in regards to the questions about EpiPens being on the school buses. That is not a requirement. It is just purely a requirement for the training of bus drivers if there is an EpiPen on board and a student, you know, has an issue. So um, there, there is not um, a need to have the EpiPens on the school buses. She was also not aware, I know Mrs. Raccio, you asked about any programs that might provide free EpiPens. Uh, she was not aware of any for transportation companies. She's only aware of the ones that we have in our school buildings. So I Thank did want to at least follow up on those two things. Thank you. Okay, next one, 12-7, the proposed deletion of policy, um, the responsibility for student conduct and deleting a policy, student discipline. Any questions or discussion on that? Okay, and the last one, a presentation of proposed new policy of student discipline. Correct. This is the second read for this policy. Again, it's a rather, um, long and dense policy. Um, I appreciate the comments and questions that I've received thus far. And at this point, no changes have been made since the first read uh, that was presented at the instructional committee. Um, so any other future questions, I will respond to in a timely manner to get that taken care of before the last read. Perfect. I did want to make note, I did not put the service animal policy on for a second read. Um, because in researching some of the questions from our last meeting, um, our attorney Shipman Goodwin had provided a new policy that they created that wasn't there when this first one was drafted. So I have some work to do on Thursday morning with our policy committee just in terms of recommended language change, which is why I left it off this agenda. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thanks so much. <clears throat> Item 13. <clears throat> I'm sorry, excuse me. Operations Committee, Mrs. LeVac. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Yep. The Operations Committee conducted budget meetings on January 23rd, January 30th, and February 6th. A regular Operations Committee meeting took place on February 11th, with the min minutes of the January 14th, 2019 meeting being approved with corrections at that <coughs> meeting. At the regular Operations Committee meeting on February 11th, the Board of Education Financial Report for January 2019 and the Cafeteria Report for January 2019 were reviewed in committee and accepted under the consent agenda this evening. The financial forecast through January 2019 was reviewed with a projected unencumbered balance of $832,255 noted at this time. The Cafeteria Financial Reports for January 2019 were reviewed in January, a profit of $22,838 was realized. It was noted that the first healthy foods check was received. Sales are up and there were six more serving days this January as compared to last year. Reimbursements for the federal lunch and breakfast programs have increased. Mr. Deptula provided a maintenance facilities update for the board. Consensus was taken on the proposed school calendars for the 2019-2020 and 2020-2021 school years. 
On January 23, 2019, the first budget workshop took place. The board reviewed the proposed sustained budget and then reviewed the strategic plan prioritization list. On January 30, 2019, the board reviewed the food service budget and reviewed and discussed the strategic plan priority list once again. Additional questions were posed by the board and were answered. On February 6, 2019, the board, board took consensus on the 2019-2020 food service budget. Additionally, the board took consensus on a percentage increase of 2.5% for the budget. The total budget request is $104,248,401. The request includes the sustained budget and strategic plan items such as the addition of one full-time special education teacher to be shared between the High School Inspire program and the ICE-T program, one full-time English language teacher, one full-time medical careers teacher, and a part-time communication specialist. There might be a couple of other things. Just to, I just want to make sure for clarification, I apologize, but the first two positions you mentioned, the special ed teacher mm -hmm. and the EL teacher are in the sustained portion. Okay. So that's part of the 2.4. And then the 0.1 additional is the medical careers teacher and, and the, the part-time communication specialist, just to differentiate. Um, so I I don't, not to correct, but I, I just want to make sure that it's clear. That's perfectly fine. Um, and what's going to happen is that this week, um, I, I, like I always do, uh, parents at the elementary level will receive information about how does the budget impact their students. The middle school parents will receive theirs and the high school parents will receive theirs and they'll be posted on the website. So I just wanted to make that clarification. Thanks. That's fine. All right. Item 13.2. I make a motion that the board approve the 2019-2020 budget in the amount of $104,248,401. I second it. Discussion on the motion? May we yeah, I, I, I just want to make a comment, if I can. I just want to congratulate and thank Dr. Manzo and all of his staff that put together this budget. They start in, I don't even know, October? And to get to this place, I, I even am looking at surrounding towns. Um, I'm really proud of this budget. I'm proud of the work that they put in and the thoughtfulness. It's a, I think it's a really, um, it's, it's a very appropriate budget. It is um, not asking for a lot. It is, I think we're being prudent and responsible and respectful to, to the local taxpayers because obviously they're impacted um, by all our budget requests in the community. So um, I know the amount of time that goes in, not only from board members once we get it, but to even get it to the place that our conversations are really almost simple at this point because the heavy lifting occurs in October, November, December, when you guys are thinking about how you're going to present a reasonable and a sustainable budget to us. And you've, you've got it down to a science, and, but I know it's not easy, and I just want to take the time to say thank you, Dr. Menzo, to you and these, all, everybody around this table, and, and then at the, even at the, your principals and, and your everybody, every, everybody has a stake in this, and everybody at each school makes up their budget, and it starts at what's going on and who's, who, how we can fine tune it, how can we improve it, how can we be minimalists but yet deliver the best education to our students possibly. So finding that balance takes so much effort and it, again, I think sometimes it comes across as effortless and you know seamless, but it isn't. It's constant conversation, constant analysis. And, and really making tough decisions sometimes. So I just wanted to take a second and say thank you to your staff at every level for the commitment they make to make our jobs, frankly, easier, I think, so. No, and I, I just want to thank you for complimenting the whole team. Yeah, it really uh, is. Because it's every level. But because you've classroom, created that with Lean. I, I mean, Well, that's, but it's everybody working together. It is. And I have to say, we even have, be prepared, because next year we already have some changes. So um, <laughs> in terms of what we want to add um, and, and really look at things a little even more um, 
I think, clearly and more effectively. So each year, because of the deep, rich conversations we have at all levels with teachers, with parents, with administrators, um, with parents, whatever it may be, it, it enhances it. But I, I, I thank you for that. But I also thank the collaboration of the board. And even though there were 83 questions, um, <laughs> they, Only the, a, the 83 questions, they do make us think. And as I shared with you, we answer those not in a vacuum. We put those in a, in a, in a document that we all are working on together. Um, sometimes stepping on each other and correcting each other's spelling and then erasing each other's things because we do that. Not that Ms. Latour ever and I do that to each other. Um, <laughs> but the thing is that it's a collaborative effort. And I, and I think that that's something that I, I think you as a board are a collaborative effort, but then it's as a district and as a team. And I, I really, um, I'm, I'm proud to be part of that team. So thank you. So I'm going to go with Patty. And I'm sorry, I usurped you. This is your part of the meeting. I apologize, Mrs. LeVac. <laughs> The control okay. in me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Mr. Votto and oh. then Mrs. Purcell. Are we still on discussing the motion? Yeah. Yes, we are. Um, I'm just going to ask if we are going to have a roll call. Yes, we are. Thank okay. you. And I just want to say thank you making the job easier. But the other thing that you do that makes it really easy is you're so you transparent. And so many people in the community see this budget. So it's like we do, it's already being sold. We don't have to do all that. And that makes it really nice. And I just want to say that doesn't happen everywhere. So thank you. Other remarks on the motion? Um, I just wanted to, I want to go back and clarify so that everybody knows our sustained services budget represents a 2.4% increase, correct? Correct. And our strategic plan is, is a tenth right. of, a, of a percent increase. And I right. think that's significant to point out that in order to sustain our services, we're asking for 2.4%. And in order to better our services, we're only asking for a tenth of a percent. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> Well said. well said. No, thank you. And that was the, that was why I brought that up earlier. So thank you for reiterating that. I also just would like to say uh, we just got and I'll um, next week will be better. So I'll send it out to you either next week or the or following week. We just got the listing from Cabe. Um, they do Caps and Cabe do a, a whole listing of all budget requests throughout the state. It's a very intriguing document. Um, there's tens, there's eights. Uh, surrounding areas are no less than three point five. Um, so again, 2.4, I wish we could go sustained lower. I would love to have sustained a two, but um, I do appreciate the fact that where we are because, it, and there are some that are lower than us, but they're much smaller communities and they also have other different uh, scenarios. But I will definitely send, once it gets more populated, there were only about, I wanna say maybe 18 districts that reported thus far. Once it gets more populated, I'll, I send that out to every year, but I'll send it out again. Ms. Raggio. Does that document, that's what the ask was, do they ever update that when the yes. budget numbers come in? Can we yes. see that, yep. like I April did, I, May? I think I said it, I well, it, we yeah, it's, probably, it's, more clo it's closer to June, June because okay. some of them have referendum yeah. and they don't have one. <laughs> um, coming from a district that prior to this that we would okay. have opportunities. That would be helpful. So, yeah, sure. Mr. Votto. Uh, Dr. Benzo, in your, in your uh, discussion before, you mentioned that uh, the budget uh, will, uh, parents in each level, at each level, will see how the budget impacts their children. Correct. Is it just on the website? No, no, no. We send out a mass email. So there will be an email sent out. We usually uh, send it out through the principals. So the elementary principals will send out my K-5 message. The middle school principals will send out the middle school. The high school principals will send out the high school. But then we give them the links that they could see everybody's. Because some will get multiple emails because they have kids at different levels. But it's always on the website, too. We've been doing this now for the last, I want to say, three or four years. Yeah, well, the key thing is that we just want to, because when they look at a big budget, if, and you can't really, it's a big number. So how does it impact my child? So that's why we divide it up and say, okay, if you're an elementary parent, this is what it means to you. Um, the sustained budget as well as the strategic. Um, and then I tell them what are the next steps. And then middle school, same thing, high school, same thing. Further discussion on the motion? Or questions or comments? <coughs> Seeing none, may we please have a roll call? Mrs. Castelli? Yes. Mrs. Corso? Yes. Ms. Levesque? Yes. Mrs. Purcell? Yes. Mrs. Raccio? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Ross? Yes. 
Mr. Votto? Yes. Mrs. McKay? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Um, item 14, new business. I do not believe we have any. Um, item 15, administration report. Dr. Amenzo, you are up. Yes. Um, and uh, this is a spoiler alert, but this is going to be coming out to everybody. Um, we have a lot going on in the next three weeks in the district, and I just want to make sure that I get some of these out to the community um, in this forum. <coughs> Starting with Tuesday, we do have the Credit for Life. Um, very, very pleased that we have over 75 volunteers <coughs> again. Um, this is a, a lot of volunteer support for this activity to take place. So we're very fortunate. Um, talk to uh, Chick-fil-A again. They're donating the food for the volunteers. So, um, and actually we have some exciting news. I won't announce it and steal their thunder, but um, we have some exciting news from Chick-fil-A for our students um, that work for them. There's, there's some really good opportunities there. So that's on Tuesday during the day. The 27th is the resource fair at Xandri Stillwood Inn. Um, again, I think it, I, I, we're very fortunate. We had great parental support. We had great staff support through Lisa Baker, Donna Curtis, and all of the PPS clerical staff working hard on this. So um, I think it's going to be a great event. What day is um, that? That's on the 27th. Thank you. Uh, which is Wednesday. Yep. I just have to keep the days in, in order. Um, then the 28th through the, th uh, the 2nd, so the 28th of February through the 2nd of March, um, is Footloose at Moran. Um, then Cinderella is the following weekend um, at Sheehan. So it's the Rogers and Hammerstein version of uh, Cinderella. On the 5th, though, um, earlier in the week, uh, is the film festival, um, which is the Step Film Festival um, the, uh, for DAG and uh, Moran. Um, and I believe it's at DAG. Um, so that's another activity, and you'll get all the times, and, and we're, uh, it's going on on my blog and everything, but I just figured getting dates out to people is important. The sixth is the spelling bee, the adult spelling bee at Moran Middle School um, in the evening, so um, come spell. Um, and then the following week we have the 12th is the invention convention, um, and then on the 14th is the wellness fair. Um, so that's just getting you through the next yeah. three weeks. The and there's 14th. a, yeah, the 14th the is the wellness fair at Martishi High School. So there's a lot of opportunity to get involved in the community, with the community to get involved in our district. On the 13th will be the first night, oh, I'm sorry, what, which one, Mr. Votto? 27th, I missed that one. The resource fair is the 27th. I, again, you'll get all this. All right. um, on the 13th of March, we're going to start, it, it'll hopefully be um, our first week of a five-week um, advanced manufacturing pipeline for veterans. Um, so we're working with recent return veterans uh, through a variety of organizations um, to have them go through a similar pipeline program that we had uh, this fall, where we employed nine uh, of our 13 graduates of the program. Um, so we're working again with the same manufacturers. Um, this is through Hubcap Wallingford, Adult Ed, as well as Workforce Alliance. So we're going to be working with uh, Mr. Messier from the um, Veterans Affairs Association for Wallingford to get this message out, as well as other communication areas. So uh, we're proud of this because we had great success, and we wanted to make sure. And we're also working with a nonprofit organization from a former graduate of Wallingford Public Schools who um, was in Iraq. And he and his, um, his bunkmate in Iraq have set up a nonprofit. And so um, they, what they do is they, he'll come and they'll actually offer the veterans um, some uh, simple coding activities and some technology skill uh, development activities during the five weeks. Uh, we also are going to have each week different resources for veterans that they might be unaware of that they have access to, so be it um, special housing, mortgage rates, or insurance. Uh, so we're going to try to bring those resources because sometimes they don't always know about all those resources. So we're very excited about this. Um, it's another step in the right direction, um, you know, in terms of trying to uh, benefit our community. I know sometimes people wonder why we're dealing with post high school or post graduates, but the thing is, if we don't keep these businesses in town um, fully staffed, they're going to find another place to go. And then our 2.4% is going to seem like a, an 8.4% um, because the community's grand list isn't going to be there. 
Um, we also are in the process of recruiting, like we had the meeting this past Friday for medical careers. We're recruiting even more advanced manufacturers because now this summer we're gonna be doing a program for students going into their senior year, um, doing a, a paid apprenticeship in the fall as seniors. Um, so we're very fortunate. We have a couple of new businesses coming to town um, and they're actually, we're trying to recruit them to come to this event. Actually, we heard today because mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor is helping us again. Um, they are coming to this event. Mr. Ryan, Tim Ryan, of course, EDC is helping us with this. Um, so really trying to show the businesses that Wallingford is a place to come because everyone wants them to be successful. Um, we, and we, we need them to be successful. Um, so it's a little bit different. It's a, I know it's a paradigm shift, but it helps our students because it puts them in a good career path and it also helps our businesses and our community. So um, I just can't thank everyone enough for their support throughout the community. Um, again, Mr. Mara, Mr. Ryan, the mayor for his support um, and, and their hard work. Um, again, there's a, a lot going on um, in the district and uh, we're, we're definitely, uh, we're in full gear. Uh, I think that I was a little jealous of my uh, neighbors who had the day off today. Um, in West Hartford and other people at the table um, who had the two <laughs> days. Um, but, um, you know, we're, we're moving forward. And uh, again, our teaching staff is working very hard as well as all of our staff. Um, this is a tough time of year. There's that February phenomenon where I don't know if it's kind of, I don't know, it gets a little freaky sometimes um, in terms of just I know there was a there was the whatever moon today or whatever the snow um, moon and yeah. you know but everybody's everybody's working hard everybody's working in the right direction for students and um, I appreciate everyone's support so thank you great thank you so announcements um, so we've got kind of an interesting march for meeting schedules locations and dates and whatnot so they're not our normal uh, necessarily um, routine. We, we will start with March 4th is our instruction committee, which would be held here at the Board of Education Conference Room at 6 p.m. Um, 6 p.m., right? We are, is that going to, are we looking to change to 6.30 or? Okay. Well, we're, we're. Is it the, we're doing, we're, I think we're going to keep the instructional, we have to make, we have to make a decision, but the instructional, okay. I think we're going to keep the instructional for at, March at six. at 6. Okay. And then um, the 11th is the operations because that's the facility meeting um, the, where we're going to get the update. Right. And that was going to be at 6 because we anticipate that to have a, potentially a longer some questions. Meeting. Yeah, sure. And that's sure. at the Ag Science Community Room. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 that's and, my But part. then the, the budget, <laughs> the regular board meeting is going to go back to 6.30. I, 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 well, we've got it at 6. Okay, so yeah. 6.30. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> let's start again. Yeah, I have been usurped, and that doesn't happen often. Um, so, <laughs> well, it's all good, Dr. Menzo. So March 4th here, 6 p.m. Um, March 11th is our operations, as articulated. We'll be at, actually, our Ag Science uh, community room at Lyman Hall, which the bulk of it will be spent at 6 p.m. We'll be spent talking about our facilities updates and, and where we're headed in that. And then uh, this is also a change, our televised... Uh, meeting um, that's also here at the yeah. Board of Education oh, because we're changing it is March 18th and I just want to put it out there right now both Mrs. Purcell and I will not be at that meeting because it because it did change we both have a not together but different vacation plans that we planned it so that we wouldn't miss the meeting but it's all good and um, so March 18th will be the uh, televised Board of Education meeting here at um, 100 South Turnpike Road at 630. And then unless there's anything else for the good of the order. I just want yes. to clarify for all board members. So board meetings going forward after March, yeah. all meetings were going to go back to 630. Yeah. Just to be consistent because oh, well, there's... Right, that's what I thought. I thought that's, I saw six. Yeah, yeah well, but I had put out six o'clock, but I think that there's been for, for board members six thirty seems like six thirty seems to be to a better start. time. So that's why. So uh, I fine. just we need to be consistent for right. posting. Uh, yeah, just doing that. So yeah. March eighteenth on the agenda says six, and you're saying six thirty. I just want to clarify which that, it is. It's going to be six thirty. Six thirty. Okay. At uh, on the eighteenth. But the other two meetings are at six. Okay, but then starting in April, Kath, it'll be 6.30. We'll be consistently at 6.30. So sorry for the confusion for people, but we'll get it together. Yes, go ahead, Mr. Bado. 
uh, our um, operations meeting, uh, the facilities uh, group will, the company will come to us and just give us an update. Well, they're going to give you. They're going to give you the information as um, I've shared. The option three. Remember, there was three, which was That's right. replicate both schools the exact same way. Three that was keep them the way they are, but the upgrades. And they're going to update the numbers of also option one because we had shared with the board that we felt um, we've been here. And I got actually I received an email today, which is ironic, that we included air conditioning in option one um, because we felt that that was a necessary upgrade. Um, so they're going to come back with refined option one with air conditioning, option three with part A, part B, and then you, the hopefully, you'll have conversation, you decide where you're going to go, how far you're going to go, narrowing it down, and then they could put together the survey, which then would go out to um, the community. I'll send out another reminder the week of the fourth um, for families and staff, uh, again, reiterating the process, right. reiterating the timelines. Um, I know it sounds repetitive, but I don't think we could over communicate because we oftentimes get accused of not communicating. Um, but this is probably this will probably be about the sixth or seventh time that I've communicated the same message. Yeah. So I hope people are. I think most people are paying attention. So we will narrow it down that night. I think that that's what you kind of need to you need to get to that point to the, because to we can't survey. to do the survey. Yeah, to yeah. do the survey. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Yeah. Um, Mr. Ross, and so, then I don't know, Patty, did you? Uh, that was my question. Okay, uh, Mr. I'm, Ross. I'm just curious, who's bumping us out of the town, out of the Parisi Chambers? Um, oh. I think there's a variety. Yeah. There's a variety of um, of committees that. So that so traditionally, Ray, uh, we're the fourth Monday, and that's our block because we're changing our meeting times. We're really infringing on other people's. You know, it, it's kind of, honestly that the town hall is used quite a bit for different committee meetings. Mm -hmm. So that's our slated time is the fourth Monday. We chose to change our meeting schedule, so hence it, it, it bumped us, if you will. So that, that, that was the case for this, for this month and next month. But then we will be back. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's, we it, do we have caused a, it. We do have, well, we do have a problem in May, and that we did not cause. Okay. Well, that's um, fine. But that's another, yeah. another opportunity. But we'll be back to town hall. And, and the after March and going back to our fourth, our traditional time, which is the fourth Monday. Okay. Any other questions, concerns, comments from the board? Okay. With that, this meeting's adjourned. Have a good night, everybody.